of the day. This is Ms. Tabasso. As you know that we have already started with Roll Does the Land Lady. Let's see the story so far. Billy Weaver reached bath at about 9 o'clock in the evening. On asking, the porter suggested him to go to the Bell and Dragon. Billy started walking through the street. Suddenly, he caught sight of a printed notice in which were written bed and breakfast. He thought to have a close look at the bed and breakfast, thus moved a bit closer. He saw that the room was well furnished and a bright fire was there in the fireplace. Billy thought that it would be a very comfortable place for him to stay. But before finally making up his mind, Billy thought that he would go and have a look at the bell and dragon. As Billy was turning to go, he felt that as if he was compelled and forced to stay over there in bed and breakfast. Without his own consciousness, he started to walk towards the entrance door and rang the doorbell. Instantly, the landlady, aged around 45 to 50, opened the door and welcomed him. Then, the landlady took Billy to the third floor of the building and showed Billy his room. After unpacking his suitcase, Billy went downstairs to sign the guest book. Billy saw that there were only two entries over there. One was of Christopher Mulholland and the other was of Gregory W. Temple. While seeing this particular name, Christopher Mulholland, he felt as if he had heard about the name somewhere before. He asked the landlady if these names were of any famous personality. But the landlady answered him that they were not very famous but very handsome like that of Billy. After that, the landlady offered Billy a cup of tea. As Billy was having the cup of tea, he was still trying to recollect where he had heard about those two names. Billy then asked the landlady if Christopher Mulholan was a schoolboy from Eton. But the landlady answered him that he was a Cambridge undergraduate. While Billy was having the cup of tea, he felt a peculiar smell coming from there. He was unable to make out whether the smell was of pickled walnut or of a new leather or it was coming from the corridor of a hospital. Billy then asked the landlady if Christopher Mulholland had left recently. The landlady replied that both Mr. Temple and Mr. Mulholland were still there on the fourth floor of the building together. Now, Let's see the remaining part of the story. Here it goes, The Landlady by Roald Dahl. That parrot, Billy said at last, it had made me completely fooled. I could have sworn it was alive. It's most terribly clever the way it has been done. He continued, it doesn't look in the least bit dead. Who did it? The parrot which was in the cage seemed alive, but actually it was dead. Billy said that it was preserved so cleverly to look the dead as real. And he added that it looked so alive and also asked who had done it. I did. And have you met my little Basil? She nodded towards the dachshund. Billy looked at it and suddenly he realized that this animal had all the time been just as silent and motionless as the parrot. He put out a hand and touched it gently on the top of its back. The back was hard and cold 
and when he pushed the hair to one side with his fingers he could see the skin underneath grayish black dry and perfectly preserved the landlady's pet caught billy's attention he analyzes the animals then and asked if they were alive the landlady asked billy if he had met basil the dog billy then realized that the dog which was in front of the fireplace and the parrot which was in the cage were silent and motionless all the time since he arrived billy thus discovered to his horror that all of the landlady's pets were stuffed animals here i would like to mention that the art of stuffing the skins of dead animals birds and fish with a special material to keep them lifelike for display is called taxidermy preservatives are used to prevent the skin from rotting good gracious me he said he stared with deep admiration at the little woman it must be most awfully difficult to do a thing like that billy was very astonished as he could not believe that the landlady who was so amicable had been so cruel and stuffed the dead animals herself as it was very difficult and unkind of her to do so not in the least she said i stuff all my little pets myself when they pass away you did sign the book didn't you the landlady said that it was not at all difficult to preserve those animals and also added that she preserved the pets herself when they die so the landlady said that she was the only one behind the preservation of the dead animals she then asked billy if he had signed the guest book oh yes billy then affirmed that he had already signed the guest book that's good because later on if i happen to forget what you were called then i can always come down here and look it up i still do that almost every day with mr mulholland and mr mr the landlady said it was good that billy had already signed the guest book as she could later on see the guest book and recall billy's name after he is no more she also added that every day she looked to the name of mr mulholland and mr temple in the guest book so that she remembers them but due to her old age she is unable to recall the name of mr temple and she could only speak about mr mulholland temple billy said gregory temple excuse my asking but haven't there been any other guests here except them in the last 2 or 3 years billy asked the tea tasted faintly of bitter almonds and he didn't much care for it holding her tea cup high in one hand inclining her head slightly to the left she looked up at him out of the corners of her eyes and gave him another gentle smile no my dear she said only you as the landlady was unable to recall mr temple's name billy reminded her of it billy then found that his tea tasted faintly of bitter almonds billy finally starts to put two and two together and realizes too late that he is about to become the latest exhibit in the landlady's private museum of taxidermy he then asks the landlady whether she had any other guests since the two young men the landlady with a gentle smile replied that it was only billy 
the very last line no my dear she said only you is an implication that the landlady has poisoned billy's tea and intends to stuff his corpse as she has already done to mulholland and mr temple now here we have word meanings first preserved maintained treated to prevent from decaying second good gracious me it is an idiomatic phrase used to express surprise third admiration a feeling of respect and liking for somebody or something fourth awfully terribly or extremely fifth inclining bending in a particular direction think and answer the questions number 1 when billy weaver rang the bell the landlady said i knew you would come why do you think the landlady was expecting him answer the landlady was expecting him as there was a printed poster with bed and breakfast against the glass and from the outside billy could see that the room had been done up in a pleasant manner and was looking like a comfortable place to stay second why do you think the tea tasted of bitter almonds answer the tea tasted like bitter almonds because it had been poisoned third what do you think happened to the previous two guests answer the two previous guests had been killed by the landlady and then stuffed fourth what do you think would have happened to billy vivo in the end answer billy would be murdered and then stuffed by the landlady now we have come to the end of the story that's all for the day hope you enjoyed the lesson thank you have a brilliant day ahead